I hope you love some theater because you are listening to Keith Price's Curtain Call. All right. Yes, yes, yes. We are back here. Keith Price for Keith Price's Curtain Call. And again, it's been a day of excitement. I have <laughs> spent part of the today as we're recording this interview, part of my day was spent at Stars in the Alley. Thanks to the Broadway League. Was it fun? Oh, my God. It was amazing. Which I remember one of my last times at Broad- Stars in the Alley, you were there with the cast of your amazing play. Because I'm sitting here now, y'all, with... We became like fast friends almost Im- instantaneously when I interviewed her at my old platform for her Tony nomination. Because I'm sitting here now with the Tony-nominated actress... Mm. Toss our hair, <laughs> Miss Geneva Carr, who last season or season before last um, gave us some fierce Texas realness, which I was very pleased because being from Texas, you did not disappoint. Oh, good. Um, in the Tony nominated play that had actors nominated and playwrights nominated, it was it was pretty spectacular, hand to God. And now she is back on the theater circuit, making her way in a brand new play entitled Incognito. Mm. And let me just tell you something. I am always surprised and excited whenever I get to have a moment with Geneva Carr because she's one of my favorite people. But I'm going <laughs> to open up with this moment because I've been saving this for I don't know how long. Ooh. But. I'm going to tell you that you did something for me that you don't realize that when you did it, what it really meant to me. And this is a perfect opportunity now for me to tell you this because some of you who have been listening to the podcast now know that I'm no longer where I used to be. And that is where I was when I first met Geneva. And it was pretty devastating when I had to make a change that I, in my mind, wasn't necessarily ready for. Mm. But I am totally learning to go with it because clearly there is something about it. And right after that moment had happened where I finally made the announcement, I went to one of the last events that I had been invited to when I was working at my previous place. And... It was a premiere for a play in New Jersey, of all places, at the Paper Mill Playhouse. And when I was sitting there having kind of personal moment of realizing that up until this time that I had been doing a lot of these these covered things for press and being involved in the theater the way that I've been able to get to be involved with, that I felt like it was going to kind of almost be over because I didn't have the place to be. And so... Me and my partner, Dale, were sitting down at our seats, and I was kind of having a moment like, I don't know if we'll ever be able to come back to the paper mill again because they don't care (laughs) that it's like And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I hear, Keith! (laughs) Keith! And I turn around, and it is Geneva Carr screaming my name and coming up to me to say hello. And I was honestly having, I swear, okay, for those of you who know how much I love the color purple, I was having the (laughs) Sophia at the dinner table moment when I was just coming back around because I wanted to say, you know, it wasn't until I had seen you that day, Miss Geneva. (laughs) I was feeling mighty low. (laughs) And... (laughs) <laughs> and you just said hi to me oh. and told me it was going to be all right. I did tell you it was going to be all right because look, and, here you are. And look, and and I really, you know, we were, I got to see the play a few days ago. And when I was at the play afterwards, we got to have a conversation and we got to have a little drinks, cocktails with her and some of her cast members. And I wanted to say something then. And then I realized I didn't want to try to steal focus because, you know. It was, it was y'all, you know, y'all are kind of bringing it down. Y'all are done. Aww. We're having a moment. But I really wanted to tell you, thank you so much for that. Because it truly did, for me in the moment, it made me feel so like, yeah, I'm all right. I'm going to be okay. Because somebody who doesn't have to say hello to me, who I think of a lot, said hello to me. Aww. And said hello to me because they just wanted to say hello to me. And I honestly, I'm telling you. I was just trying to secure another interview. <laughs> 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 and so let me take off my glasses oh. so I don't start crying again. It was, but it was. I did. I had that moment where it was just like, wow, okay. Well, then maybe this is this is going to be the new path. And so Geneva Carr is here to talk about not only her play, but we're just going to sit and talk about just everything. And it's so fun because Geneva's play, Incognito, right now, is one of those pieces that I'm so glad that I got to see it. And I'm so glad that it was one of those things where you made me work just as hard as you guys have to oh, work on stage to do it. that's what we say. 
We say it's the play that to get the audience has to get on there too. They now, have a part too. Now, how did you get involved in this piece? I was lucky enough to audition. Um, I saw Doug Hughes. I saw uh, the final dress performance of Doubt before it opened at MTC. Right. And that was a few years ago. And mm-hmm. I thought, God, if I could just get in a room with Doug Hughes. And that's what a Tony nomination gets you. <laughs> and I auditioned for him. And when I auditioned for him, I said, God, that was so much fun. He's he's the most articulate, chatty charismatic man I know and I thought oh god that audition was so fun if I don't get it it's okay I I got to be in a room with Doug Hughes and then I got the job and it's been wildly fulfilling it's I almost don't want to say too much about the play because I don't want to scare people because Nick Payne is known for his brainiac works and Mm -hmm. he's fascinated by science and the play is in part about brain function right and that sounds dry but it is a visceral, heartfelt, gut-wrenching play that's also funny. Yeah. And I have to say, what's fun about it, too, is it's a four-hander. So there are four actors, Heather Lind, Morgan Spector, Charlie Cox from Daredevil, me. Uh, four chairs, a fantastic set by Scott Pask mm-hmm. that is so unique and different. And Doug likened it to, he said, I just want it to be like four actors goofing off and we're watching it yeah. so it's really unusual in the sense that there really isn't a set there is a set but it's almost the absence of a set right our costumes are the absence of costumes because we're in these shades of gray and we go from scene to scene in a breath in yeah. a breath and an accent and a gesture and it is so intense and fast that for us, I thought, I'm, I'm never going to learn this. I thought, is this perimenopause? Am I losing my memory? What's happening? But somehow it came together. People come to us and say, you know, how did you learn that? And I say, I don't know. I don't know how I learned it. But it's really the, fun. Because there's even moments in this piece you're giving me a little choreography. <laughs> well, I thought you don't sing and dance. And uh, then you all giving me hands and voguing and stuff. I, I'm I like, call it brain doing? synaptic voguing. <laughs> Because Peter Pucci was our choreographer, and he and Doug worked very closely together to try. There are three sections of the play. Right. Um, and somebody's going to have to help me. I think it's encoding. What is it? Encoding, retrieving. <laughs> no, retrieving's the last. Encoding. It's it's how yeah. you you take something in, you store it, and you call it back. But I, right. I can't remember the fancy words. <laughs> Because I don't have to say them. I just exactly. have to feel it. And there's there's a Chiron that comes on. So, <laughs> so yeah, There's words on the back wall. But so Peter Pucci designed these dances. He choreographed these dances for us that mm-hmm. I, you know, it's my goddaughter came. My goddaughter from Paris comes every year to spend a couple of weeks with me. And, uh-huh. and her English is, you know, not perfect. Let's say that. So she came to see the show and she had two questions. Who played Einstein? Well, Einstein's not in the play, though we mention him. And then she, I said, what'd you think of the dancing? And she said, oh my God, I loved it. It's what's happening in your brain. Interesting. And that's exactly what it is. So I find that the people who come to the show and let go, mm-hmm. because it's nonlinear. It's also exactly. really unusual. It's You know what I found so fun about the piece? And that was, it was piecing the the story together because it's all part of the same tapestry yeah. but was trying to figure out which pieces fit where and mm-hmm. how the patchwork was going to ultimately come out and i think that that for an audience member that's the challenge because a lot of people that are now coming to see the theater they want dancing they want singing they well, want well they want a beginning middle and end and that want, is obvious exactly and, and you don't get that with this you don't get that i mean i have to say the ending is so beautiful to mm-hmm. me charlie cox does something really spectacular at the end that's really sensational yeah. and i i can hear the crying and i can hear the gasping mm-hmm. and last night someone said oh nice just as the <laughs> lights went out um so but nice. to get there if you just let go mm-hmm. i i think it has a different effect so it is an intellectual piece right but I think what's fascinating about Nick's writing, because he's known for that, is actually how almost spiritual it is. Yeah. Because it's about love. Yeah. I mean, it is about brain function. It's about identity. Uh, I play several. I play. We each play five different characters, and I play a woman who's having a midlife crisis. I don't yeah. know if I should say too much more, but be I, you know, th- that's the thing is, is that I, I feel like. Having had the experience of going in cold and not knowing and knowing mm-hmm. that I was going to be have, – I'd have to engage myself, mm-hmm. that was enough for me. And I think that that's what people need to have 
as far as the only piece of knowledge about the piece because then it allows them to follow the th- strands and look yeah. at the pieces and see how it's being put out. Because there were moments where I was just like, okay, wait, okay, hold on. So are we, who's this person Who with? Who is this? Exactly. Why did they do that? And figuring out the connections that they had between them. Like, you know? But that, my character Martha says, the brain uh, builds a narrative to study us from moment to moment, mm-hmm. but it's ultimately an illusion. Right. And that's what the play does. Yeah. It, it doesn't build a narrative the way we're used to. So the pieces are all there, but you have to put them together. So it's the kind of play that you do want to talk. You know, most time you go to the theater and like, oh, that was fun. Where are we eating? But it's like, oh, where are we eating? I got to ask some questions. Course- somebody, somebody who saw that has to talk to me about this. <laughs> well, okay. So Geneva, then tell me then as an actor. When you get this role, because this is five different roles for you specifically, and they're interacting with these other 15 characters Mm -hmm. in some way, shape, or form, even Mm -hmm. if it's just a matter of when the scene changes, you're leaving from one character scene into another moment. How hard is that to keep that straight? Because this play isn't that long. I mean, Uh, you know. It's under 90 minutes. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest with you. It was hard to learn. <laughs> it was hard. Um, you know, when you audition, I got to audition for my my two parts, right. and then I got to come back for my three parts, and then it was mm-hmm. like, oh god, I got to play two more. <laughs> Who is this lady? Um, but these actors are really, really fun. Mm-hmm. So it feels like playtime. So a lot of what you create when you find one of these people is facing the other actor. You right. know, I work with Morgan Spector a lot, and. Yeah. God, mm. I love that guy. God, he is – well, I mean, mm. I, let's, we can't talk about how handsome he is, but he's Oof. handsome. Jeez, it's it's Again. debilitating. I can't <laughs> – some days I just – it was debilitating. It's like, do you know how much trouble I got into, by the way? <laughs> just side note. After, after we left the bar, I was with Geneva after seeing the show, and <laughs> Geneva and I were like, and the men. Ooh, oh, and the men. To and I was there with my partner, and he was just kind of like, oh, really? <laughs> Mm, you thought they were that great, huh? I'm sorry. You'd be blind not to notice those men. <laughs> That's what I kept saying. I mean, I, I told this to, to the boys the other day. I had a friend in, my best friend from high school, Isabel, was in town, and she came to see opening. And, you know, they're both so attractive. And so she she got a little tipsy. And she came home and she said, I, I don't know who I like better. I th- I, it's Charlie. I think my heart is this Charlie. Don't tell Morgan. And I was like, I'm not going to tell anybody. You're okay. And in the morning she woke up and she said... The first thing I thought of was Morgan's face. I think it's Morgan. Don't tell Charlie. <laughs> and it's like that schoolgirl crush. Uh, uh, but you know, I hate mm. to tell you, they're the nicest guys in the world. You on know, when you on top of that, when you work with actors and stuff goes wrong, that's when you know who you're with. Yeah. And we've had each other's backs in a way that is they're reliable and generous and. You know, I pick a different actor to watch every day. And because I'm most of my scenes are with Morgan, I would have to say, he is so different in every scene. Yeah. And from day to day, we had two shows one day, and I was going to tell him after the matinee, my God, you were so playful. <laughs> you just were so silly. And then that night, it was a totally different performance. That's the amazing thing about acting that is hard to explain to someone, and it's, it's how, as an actor, you finally understand it. Right is that you rehearse to death, so you ask how hard it was to learn. Oh, it was hard. Mm -hmm. It was hard because from one scene to the next, and they're short scenes. So you have to not only know in the scene, then you walk away and you sit back at the edge of the stage while we watch other scenes happen and then when you need to come in. But there's this quality that it's, it's one whole show. And now that I've been doing it, I don't think I could do it with the other scene without the other scenes because when right. I'm sitting on the edge of the stage watching, that's how I prepare for the next scene, and it's really hard not to laugh. It's really hard not to. There's one moment where Charlie gets pushed, mm-hmm. and last night I went ow because it just shocked me so much. <laughs> it looked like it hurt his elbow, but he was okay. But they're so good that they fool me. <laughs> See? I mean, in the beginning, I, I missed a cue. I was a tad late because I was so involved. I was like, oh, gosh, that's me. I got to go. Wow. It's it's a really fun piece to be in. And it's a hard piece for us to judge with the audience because we've been watching it so much. And in the beginning, we were anticipating the laughs. And it's one of those shows that the laughs start. Mm-hmm. And then because there's so much information coming at you, I watched the laughs pull back a tad. Because people have to pay attention. Yeah. So in the beginning, we thought, oh, they don't like us. We're not funny. 
but you got to pay attention. Yeah, there, there's yeah. a trick that Nick does in the show where we say other characters' names a lot. Mm-hmm. Like we often say our names. We often say, Keith, how are you? We say the name of the character so that you can figure out who's who because that does help. Right. I mean, if there are 20 characters, I can't even remember how many scenes there are. I just – I find it so fascinating because this is one of those pieces where when – you as an actor are in it. Like you said, you, you drill yourself so hard to learn the play, but then you learn the play so that you can let go mm. and do the show, do let the show live. You just wrote an acting novel right there, a book about <laughs> acting right there. <laughs> That's, I mean, it's the really. shortest book about acting I've ever but, read. But, I mean, how th- that to me is the, the part that I think scares me the most as a performer it w- or would scare me because it's sort of like – I mean, it's one thing when you're that's doing... that's the only reason to do it. If you know exactly what's going to happen and how it's going to go down, you wouldn't want to perform because it sounds pretentious, but that's what art is. Right. So, you know, you can be an accountant, and I was a banker, and you, math adds right. up. But the amazing thing about playing in this way, you plan it to death so that whatever feelings you're having, whatever the room is, it can be alive. And I'm sure it's not as different to an audience it is as to us, Mm -hmm. but I see these actors are so nuanced and different every night. And I pick a different actor to kind of study, and I learn from them, and they do the exact same thing. You know, out of the blue, Charlie will say, oh, really great tonight. And you think, oh, you noticed me. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a great feeling because we get a different audience every night. So for you, Geneva, when you're talking about this, it's sort of like, is that the secret to keeping it fresh for you? Do you use that technique of, of looking at other actors or sp- focusing on a different actor every night so that it... I've never had the luxury to do that. You know, we had talked about Hand to God. Yeah, well, I mean, you were which, all in that. By the way, it was Rob Askin's birthday yesterday, and he and his girlfriend came to the show last night. Mm. And we went out to that secret that same spot. Place? Oh. That secret spot. See, this for is when, when you're in birthday. the know, honey. <laughs> this is how you got to do. It's my big secret. Mm. Um, but that show was another show that... It it was so fresh. Mm-hmm. Another troupe of actors that never recreated a moment. Stephen Boyer is the most consistent actor you will ever meet in your life. Mm-hmm. But he will say the same line, and it's as if he's never said it before. He will do the same choreography. I saw that scene with Tyrone where they go at each other. Mm-hmm. It was physically the same because Steve is incredibly consistent. Mm-hmm. But it was different every time he ever did it. Wow. And Timmy and I, you know, Michael yeah. Oberholzer, we would have that crazy scene where we would go at each other. And every night, even till the last performance, we're like coming off the stage. <gasps> How was that? <laughs> what do you think about that line? <laughs> what do you think? And I, if there is a technique, you know, mm-hmm. and I think we all have to figure out what our personal technique is. Yeah. It's got to be fresh every night. And you can't force it. It's, it's letting go. Wow. But maybe that's life. You know, it sounds silly, but maybe that's life as you, you – Plan as much as you can. You know, I'm planning for retirement, and then I'm going to let go and let God. But I'm saving up for it, but I don't know what's going to happen. You know, that's just – that's how we wow. live. That's how we should live. That's how we should live. Wow. Well, Geneva, I mean, it's, it's just – it's so fun because I feel like – Whenever I get these opportunities to to just sit in kibitz, it's sort of like I I feel very fortunate because you get to bring so much into this. And, you know, the one thing I love about it is like, you know, you and I have – I have a desire, a hidden desire that you have already had the experience of and that is a scene with Christopher Maloney. And (laughs) – Oh, it was good. It was real good. He's – I've worked with him twice on that show and Mm. he's – He's an amazing actor, and he's very generous. Because mm-hmm. when you guest on those things, and you're terrified, and you say, "Could I have this or that?" Yeah, he's so available. And, and see, he's for not me, hard to look at. <sighs> and that butt, Oz is I have to me. say, I was I'm talking so, to like, him. <laughs> I don't know that I noticed the butt. I'll check it out next time. <laughs> you, honey, just get on the internet. <laughs> okay, Maloney. What's the other thing that that we can well, do? Well, well, the other thing that you've you you've done is being on Law & Order SVU. Not only once, not twice, but three times. And the last time, I lived for because she was giving y'all Dugger Mom a realness. Oh, honey. it was good. 
ten you and Christopher children. Christopher Sieber. <gasps> Christopher Sieber, whom I adore. I adore Christopher. I I had never seen him on stage, but he was at an audition, and I said to Don Case, the casting director, "Who is that? Can you set me up with him?" He's like. Geneva's gay. He's gay. Oh, I just have no gaydar. <laughs> I can't tell ever. <laughs> it's girl, terrible. You've been in this business way too long to not have gaydar, girl. It's, I don't you could get in trouble every time. <laughs> I, I could probably be in bed with a man and not know he was gay. I just, I don't have it. Me too. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I've done that a lot of times. <laughs> I'm not gay. I'm just spy. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're so sidetracking. <laughs> um, I think my my acting technique can help you in your new journey right now. Oh, and yeah? your new job. Because you prepared for this. Everything you've ever done has prepared you for what you're doing now. Yeah. And now you're going to let go and let it become what it's going to become. But you oh. come at it with all that energy and all that knowledge. And you just have to be free. Ooh. Don't you think? Y'all, Geneva Carr. <laughs> what? My friend, Tony Nominee, Geneva Carr. Tasha Isn't Hedback. it amazing? That's never going to leave my name. Never. I think I'm going to have Isn't a business best? card. Tony yes. Nominee, Geneva Carr. Maybe. Until I win. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got to tell you, I lost to Helen Mirren. I consider that a win. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I walk around like I won because I, won. I lost to her. Because we were in the same, same, what was it, the room where it happens? That's the, oh, the new yeah. one now. So now, speaking of which, you have conquered the stage. You are doing a little of the TV here and there, but now I understand you have a real TV job. Well, I've been a guest star a bunch of times, Mm -hmm. and it's amazing. But I am now uh, a lead on a new TV show for CBS called Bull. Like, don't give me any bull. Okay. Can Um, I do one one thing right now? Yeah. Oh, my God, I'm so exciting! (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty exciting. Come on! (laughs) <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Lead network. Um, Just saying, wait she didn't even do a cable, y'all. This is fucking network, all right? <laughs> CBS, what? Home yeah, of the Tonys, what? They don't what? get around. They don't get around. You know who else is on it? Christopher Jackson. Christopher Jackson, Another Michael Tony Weatherly. Nominee. Yes, uh, from mm. NCIS. Who's mm. fantastic. He's our yes. lead. It's based on uh, the career of Dr. Phil before he was the Dr. Phil we know from television. Dr. Phil was the most prolific jury consultant that ever existed. Wow. He made a fortune and was exceptional at his job. And he had a team of people that worked for him. Hey, he saved Oprah. Come on. He, he did. Come but on. it sounds crazy, but when you see the show and you understand what jury consulting is, it's pretty fascinating. And so it's going to just have a slew of jobs for actors in New York is what I say, because not only will we have juries mm-hmm. and criminals, but we're going to have mock trials. So we're going to need more juries. So already in the pilot, I had four friends who were you know, cast as guest star and co-star. So it was lovely. I can, you know, I could do it. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm good for a cross. Are you, you kidding? Are. For a cross exam, what? you're ready. You are ready. What? I didn't do it! <laughs> <laughs> he made me do it. He made me do it. I didn't want to kill him. I really did it. <laughs> I loved him so much. <laughs> I think you're cast. Ooh. I think you're cast. That was you know, a little raising Arizona. I liked it. I, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I feel like, you know, somewhere for me, I know that that I'm one of those people that I can handle the if if you got stuck in these particular roles I wouldn't be mad mad just because I'm a comedian so I can do it at other things but you know sassy gay upstairs neighbor check that's check. what I want I could do angry police officer direct you know like like um what was it in Beverly Hills cop the angry police officer oh, that was yeah, his, yeah. I can do that okay. oh I can always have the screaming moment I can give you 10 like that and then of course foreman of the jury Yes, of course. That's always, you know, I can, you know. Have you ever been on a jury? No, I got out of jury duty last oh. time I got it pulled in, and I'm afraid that it's going to be happening soon. They're going to come again because I got out of it last I time. I was a four person, and I've served several times. Ooh. Several. I must be on that sucker's list because I just go. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'll just walk in but, and go, I think he's guilty. Here's the crazy thing when you do it, because I've, I've been questioned a bunch of times, but I actually did serve mm-hmm. on a trial. It's going to sound crazy, but it feels really patriotic because you realize the system really does work. We had 12 people who really gave this person a fair trial. Yeah. It felt pretty amazing. It was intense because I was the foreperson and I had to stand up and say, we found him guilty. Oh. It's really scary. It was scary. He was guilty, though. He was guilty. He did it. 
<laughs> did, you, did you know he was guilty before it started? No. Cause, cause okay. He, gave him he the looked process. so innocent and adorable. <laughs> I, I, we had no idea. But when the facts came to light, when the facts came to light. Wow. Mm. Oh, so look at you! You can bring all that experience now into your new TV show. Oh, I'm very Bull. excited. Well, they're going to let me speak French on the show. They asked me what my fantasy is, and I sign a little bit, and I said my fantasy is Marley Matlin. Oh wow! Okay, that was yes in sign. Okay, so first of all, let me just can we do a little international sweep <laughs> with Geneva Carr? So you spent time working in France mm-hmm. as. Um, you were doing um, banking? Yeah, investment banking. I have an MBA from a school in Paris. Okay, and that translates into acting how? Well, <laughs> when, you're, when you're bilingual, your French bank sends you to New York to work for the French company here. Oh. And uh, a high school acting teacher named Daniel Judas Scalar, who lives in New York City, takes you to see a play at Ensemble Studio Theater, and he blows your mind, and you throw your career away because... You're young and naive and don't know any better. That's what happens. Really? Mm. Really? And that place I took you to, is that was my first like job. Because I thought you just became an actor and made a living. But I actually had to cocktail at that special place we had drinks. Yeah. The reality of the, of the work, right? Mm. I'm still a hero there. They're so nice to me. Oh, well, good. <laughs> Even though the service is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Where I took Rob Askins last night. Got him a birthday cake. Sang to him. The staff came over and sang. It was very nice. <laughs> you know, again, Geneva, it's like, you know, MTC is just having a wonderful season. That, and oh. they just, these, these, I think these particular productions that they do that are not necessarily the main stage ones are the ones that always have these really interesting something or another's about them. Yeah. And Incognito, I think, totally for me, falls into that category. Excuse me. <clears throat> falls into that category because it, you do. You, you got to work. Yeah. You have to work. And that's something that I know you do every day as your career. Like, you are working it every day. She's on the stage. She's, like, literally when this show wraps, you're going to get up and probably the next day, it's like there's no cast party for you. Maybe you walk in and have, like, a crudité and then you got to go because, you know, she's, she's busy starting... Network television. We are extended. Incognito has extended until July 10th. That's right. You have two extra weeks to see the show. I highly recommend it. Take a date. Take a date. Um, Actually, we get a lot of hand holding. It's cute because I I watch people in the first couple rows. We get Mm -hmm. a lot of hand holding. Couples of all ages. I just don't understand what's going on. Wait. wait, Who is that person? Is she French? Wait. Is he? (laughs) I think they like it. But it's Um, And then I start the TV show on the 11th. So it's going to be one of those amazing things. So now I get to have, I have had the pleasure of having Geneva on stage twice, and then you guys now, if you don't come to New York to see her in an incognito that's put on by Manhattan Theater Club, if you don't get to see her, then you have until July 10th to do so, then you will be tuning into her. What nights? Do we know what nights are? Tuesday nights at 9, CBS. Ow. Isn't that exciting? Ne- Meow. Network, baby. <laughs> this thing is doing network. I just I want to stay. It shoots in New York because I want to stay in New York so I can do theater on hiatus. Oh my god, that's my big plan. <laughs> See, it's like the the um, the I want to say the Raúl Julia. It's the Raúl Esparza method. Exactly, exactly. See? Look at that. Mm. So we just have to make the show on on CBS a huge hit. So that way, when yes. when you do your hiatus, you will get to pick what you want to do on Broadway versus having an audition. Oh, there's so many things I want to do. What would you want to do? Well, Askins is working on a new play. Uh, Ask him, does he have big black gay guy in his thing? Because I remember when I saw him, too, I threw that big black gay guy thing at him. Like, can you not find one to just throw in the shit? You know, I'm there. I'm there for a cross, honey. All right, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up. Something sassy. (laughs) You know, ten lines first act, ten lines second act. I'll sit in the back and I'll wait until everybody does their curtain call. I'm good. It's usually about Christianity and and some form of torture. Is that okay? I'm good with that. Okay. Because Christianity <laughs> tortured me too, child. I used to, uh, he, he walking around thinking he's the only one. <laughs> so him, no, this. every Texan suffered. We know that. 
<laughs> Honey, Jesus was the root of a lot of problems for many of us growing up in the big, the big Texas. But again, it's always for me. It's just truly a joy and a delight. One to get to see you on stage. That's Thank you so that's much. a pleasure, and that's from the very beginning. And then at the same time, having the the privilege and the luxury of getting to know you a little bit better than just seeing you on stage has always been for me the joy. And like I said before at the beginning, when you um, misseeded me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. At the paper mill playhouse. <laughs> and Kevin, because I was feeling mighty low. Oh, when she came, when you came to me, that, that to me changed the dynamic of whatever else happens with us. And I hope that not only are people going to get to see you and enjoy you here with me like I am right now, but at the same time make the effort to check you out when you are on stage in Incognito till July 10th Thank and you. make the effort to find you Tuesday nights at 9 o'clock on CBS for Bull. Even if you don't care necessarily for the show, you're going to watch it because I told you to watch Geneva and Chris Jackson. Okay, go Google on YouTube mm-hmm. the trailer for Bull. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah, it's really good. So I have to <sighs> say so, so myself. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good, y'all. She's real good. <laughs> Honey, she's giving it to you. And again, you know, I, I love you. So I I'm you, I, right you know, back. it's like it's good to be able to now have some place different that we can sit and have a love fest and again Well once the show is up and running and a success, can we talk about it even though it's curtain on. call? Yes. <laughs> no, because the, the the thing about the curtain call that I keep trying to explain to people is it is about folks that are doing all kinds of entertainment. But if you have the theater, you get first priority. And so you will always have first priority, not because you're just theater, because I love you. And Mm -hmm. so from that, folks, get out. Find Miss Geneva Carr online and find out where she is. Go car go. No, go underscore car go. Underscore go. Wait. (laughs) Go underscore car underscore go. Yes. (laughs) Is at Twitter and at Instagram. And Um, incognito at MTC. Incognito at MTC. You know, if they do, they record Hand of God for like the the Lincoln Center thing, so that they can be in the archives. Yes, they did. Yeah. So if you do like me, lie about what you do so that you can <laughs> sneak in and go. <laughs> I did not say that at the public library. I didn't hear it. You didn't hear. Tell them that you're writing something and it's very similar to. <laughs> you need to see. <laughs> you need it. to search. They're very kind. <laughs> They're very, They're very good kind. about that. Or lie so you know somebody. Um, and and see if you can see Geneva Carr and everything, and go to her her website because there's all these reels and clips of her from the different shows that she's been on, singing terribly at karaoke. Oh, and it's like, oh, she wasn't <laughs> acting because she doesn't sing. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> so great, so great. She's commercial mom. She's everything. So again. Um, you know, thank you so much, first thank of all, so much, Geneva, Pete. for coming and spending time with me. And again, you guys, it is a treat. So make sure you see Bull come this fall, Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. on CBS. Get your behind here to New York City before July 10th so you can see her in Incognito, as well as them two hot men she got in that mm, play. And Heather Lind, please. Oh, she's adorable. Mm. But she ain't them two boys. I'm just, you know, <laughs> I'm speaking for the gay people in the audience. <laughs> she's fabulous. Don't get me wrong. We had a good time hanging out and stuff. But mm, the men's the men's is good. The men's is good. Mm. That's good. That's good eye candy for you, and you deserve that. Oh, thank you. You deserve I appreciate good eye that. candy. I've been taking advantage of it. Yes, you should. <laughs> mm. And we got, you know, me and Geneva are going to probably have drinks later and talk about a lot of other <laughs> stuff, but y'all can't be privy to everything. So, again, thank you so much for spending time with me, and go see Incognito. Go see Bull, and, um, you know, go, go, go underscore car go. No, go <laughs> underscore car Two R's underscore go and find her. Done. She's great. Thank oh, you. thank you so much, Geneva. Thank you. This is great. And we will be back. This is Keep Price's Curtain.